Mark, what was that uh, like for you to go through this experience, especially in person now, and have that real full experience of so the draft? The at the table said it went smooth, and I, I said I feel like a short order cook with a full restaurant. Um, you know what? Uh, I wouldn't want to come into this uh, unprepared. Uh, I really want to tip my cap to Paul Castron and Scott Harris, the executive group. Um, you know, and all of our regional scouts who do who do most of the work. But we came in with a good list. Uh, we came in with a game plan. Uh, I think we executed it pretty well, and we're really excited about the draft. Tell me a little bit about Nemec, Simon Nemec, and what was appealing to you guys about him? What made him the right flavor for this team? Well, I, I mean, <laughs> they say right, right shot defensemen are hard to get, although we took four of them. Uh, no, uh, elite hockey sense, you know, elite hockey sense. Played against men. Um, great offensive instincts, sees the ice incredibly well. Uh, it never seems to be uh, in a rush, you know. And so you can look at that and say, well, geez, you know, how is this skating or whatever? But it's because he knows where to go before, you know, anyone else. Um, you, you watch the world championships, and not only is he running a power play, but he's also a guy that they put out six on five when they're down a goal. They're looking for a goal. Um, his seriousness of purpose, I mean, he's a driven young man. Um, you know, when you when you talk to Craig Ramsey, who's been around uh, at the NHL for as long as he has, and he says he's not sure he's ever coached a, a player with with his hockey sense at this age. Um, you know, it, we were re really excited to get him. As a collective group, were there a lot of talks with Craig Ramsey, knowing what he's meant to Slovakian hockey as well? Uh, yeah. So obviously, Fitzy played for him. Yep. Uh, Lindy played with him. Uh, and and I was uh, lucky enough to speak to him afterwards. And I mean. Look at that Slovakian program. I think they had you know, three in the first round, and then another uh, Sikora went as well. Um, you know, it, it's it's a great for their country, uh, and you gotta. I think you gotta give Craig Ramsey a lot of credit. You know, you look at how these kids played, uh, and and to have the uh, the patience and the confidence to play these young players on the world stage which is only going to get them even more prepared for, for the NHL. So um, it, was a, it was a difference maker for us. And, and um, uh, you know, his when, when he speaks highly of a player, uh, you know it's, it's well-founded. Was there um, an intention to go so heavy defensively through this draft, or is it just kind of the way things panned out? Yeah, well, listen, we put a list together, and it's, and it's best available. Um, you know, that probably goes to about the fourth round. Mm -hmm. And then we still have a list, but now we're sitting down with Fitzy, and it's, it's more about, okay, you know, have we been heavy in one area or another? Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I mean, this is where you go to get players you can't get through trades and... and uh, and, and oftentimes not through free agency because teams don't give good players up. So, uh, no, it was it was best available, um, and, and we're excited about our group. It just happened that it's, you know, I, I'll i take the heat, right? I played defense growing up, so I'm, my buddies have already texted me, you know. Um, no, it, we, we went with the list, and, and, you know, we think that where we picked, these are the best places. And we also think that some of the guys we picked were probably lower than they should have been, which is what excited us as well. Yeah, actually, to that point, um, I mean, you can almost start right from the first pick today all the way down. I just thought, first of all, it's going to be interesting. There's going to be three guys at Michigan, right? 3D. Um, Easy for our development group. <laughs> <laughs> but about, about uh, is that Seamus? <laughs> you can all go one spot. Yeah. Seamus, uh, any comment about him? Uh, elite skater. I mean, this is a guy that, that you know, most a, a lot of public lists had as a first round, you know. Um, and we had guys in our group that had him, uh, you know, potentially number one in the U.S. Um, just a, 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 an elite skater, uh, instant breakout. Uh, for for I don't like the term small, right? Uh, I mean there is small, but a lot of times these defensemen are short, right? Yeah. So he is thick, and and he's got a, a, another another young man with a seriousness of purpose. When you sit down and you talk to him, you know that he's not going to be denied, you know. And so, um, no, we're really thrilled to get him. Thrilled to get him, and even more thrilled that he was where we, where we got him. And, I mean, these things can be tricky, but a lot of people think you might have got the best goalie in the draft in uh, the fourth round. Brennan, yeah. Yeah. Uh, just thoughts about him? You know, I really like kind of what we've done. We've got sort of a goaltending group with uh, spearheaded by Scott Clements and we brought in Anders Nielsen. Um, you know, having Marty Brodeur as a part of the group, it can only uh, uh, amplify it. But, uh, you know, we had some goaltenders identified and, and uh, you know, 
he was right there at the top of the list, and to get him um, where we got him was a steal. So it's kind of a two-parter. He, he played only something like 20 games up until Christmas this year, and then they made a trade, and he became the guy. So, I mean, he's going to be – he hasn't really played a lot of hockey in the last two and a half years. But is that – did that factor in it at all? No, no. I mean, we – again, you know, we really trust this goalie group to put together a list. Way. Yeah, yeah, no. I, you know what, it's – the position itself is usually a, a, a mature position, right? So as much as the draft is not about next year, with the exception of maybe the first round, uh, most of these picks are for down the road. And I would say the goaltending position, if you look at the average age of a starting goaltender in the NHL, is – you know, right at the top. So, go ahead. What was, the, what was the biggest difference? Obviously, I'm sure Emmett's and your check kind of maybe in that same mold. I don't know. But what was the difference for you between the two? Yeah, again, a lot of these these evaluations are razor thin. You know, um, we we liked how we, he just doesn't get rattled. You know, I thought his maturity. Um, you, you see at the World Championships that he's on the ice when it really matters. Um, you know, hey, listen, David Yerchek's a heck of a player, and he's going to be a good player as well. Um, you know, it's it's uh, we had him where we had him, and uh, we're excited to have him. Excited to get him. You talked about your list, so Nemitz obviously was up there. Where Slavkovsky was was he number one on the list? You have to ask the question, Mike. Uh, I have to ask and, it, and I'm a little bit smarter than I look, <laughs> so I'm not going to answer. Um, well, let me ask you this: We, we got the. Think, we, what did you we, think of Slavkovsky? What did you think of him as a player? Listen, there there are a lot of good players in this draft. You're looking at the future of the NHL, future stars in the NHL. Um, listen, we, we did have uh, Yuri in, a uh, wonderful young man, an infectious personality. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure he's going to be very successful. Uh, and there are a lot of guys in that boat, and uh, we're really, really thrilled to have Simone Emmerich. What do you think about Letty or uh, Orlov, uh, two other defensemen? Yeah, um, you know, Orlov is a guy that, that we think has a pretty good upside, you know, and again, talk about taking swings sometimes, you know, uh, there might be some parts of his game that need to be refined, but he's a 6'2 defenseman, mobile, who can jump into the play and make plays, um, you know, Charlie's got a little bit of sandpaper in his game, you know, uh, you know, he's a guy that I think was asked to probably play a little bit of a different role in the national program this year, um, you know, and obviously going to college gives us a little bit of a runway, uh, but, but uh, really nice kid, plays hard, plays the right way, um, you know, we're, we're excited. We think we've got some guys, even later in the draft, that not only can play at the NHL, but might be able to move up the line. And then Philman, <laughs> uh, sorry, <laughs> Philman is interesting because there are people out there that expect him to go a lot earlier than he did. And I, you seem to reference, maybe not him, but that generally. But he also had almost a physical transformation this year. He was a completely different player, both physically but performance-wise, from the beginning to the end. Can you walk us through? Well, that I think that plays a part in it, right? Like a lot of these guys, I mean, I can't tell you the number of players we looked at who two years ago were five foot seven, who are now six foot two, right? And and you look at their development, and, uh, and Josh was that type of player. Like you can see, he still has some filling out to do, um, but to have uh, the impact uh, uh, production-wise, to score the goals in the areas he scored them, even not being as strong as he's going to be when he has a chance to compete for an NHL spot, is is really attractive. So um, I mean, when you talk about swinging swinging for the fences, that's sometimes what you're looking for. Hey, if this guy fills out, you know, you're gonna have a, a Central star he did. so um, no, it, it, when we saw him there, there was no hesitation. So you said he still has room to fill out because added 20 pounds of muscle yes. in one year, so he still has room to add during the season. With, without a doubt. Yeah, this guy is, is just really coming into his own fit. And, uh, he still, he, he's added 20 pounds, but... Um, good quickness, and like I said, goes to the hard areas already before he's, he's big enough and strong enough to really own that space. So, um, you notice that change in the game? Like, sorry? Got, you notice that change in his game, like when he was a little smaller, but as he added the muscle? So, so with this aggressive. with this being my first year on the road, it was something that our Western Scouts identified for sure. Okay. You know, so Glenn Dirk and, and Joe Ferris, um, you know, this is a guy they've, they've had on their radar for a long time. And all I can tell you is one of the gratifying parts for us is, and they're the ones putting their names on a guy, uh, you know, when you 
draft a guy and Glenn Dirk sends a heart back at you on a text, <laughs> you, you got to feel pretty good. So that's what happened? With a heart text? I can either confirm or not. <laughs> Uh, just in general, I mean, I saw you on the road a couple times. I saw you in Barry one night. It's your first year on the road. You just referenced it, but it was a weird year. Yeah. Some of the buildings were empty in Canada well past Christmas. Yes. Masking. I mean, do you feel like we're back to normal? <laughs> so I, 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 come I haven't coached, I've been coached collegiately for 20 plus years. I was on the road a lot recruiting. Yeah. So that, that part of it wasn't different. Um, I, I will say, uh, transitioning from coaching into this role, my wife did ask me the other day, so do you have an off-season? Because with the July draft and then the link at the end of the month, it has kind of switched together. So, um, no, but the, listen, the staff does most of the heavy, heavy lifting. Our group, between the regional scouts and, and, and our crossover guys, you know, they're the ones that really grind. Um, I get the cushy ones. <laughs> on cut, uh, is uh, Nemes going to be at rookie camp next week? Or? To be honest, I, I think he, he is. Yeah, so, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm just <laughs> coming out of being. That's me. That's me. I saw a head shake. I just uh, came out of being in the kitchen. All so. right, I got gotcha. you. Um, follow up to that. How, how close do you think he is? I mean, is, is he a year away? Is this a kid that you're going to see in training camp? What he can do? What's the plan here? For him? So, I, I think, you know. Tom Fitzgerald has made it pretty clear that that you know we want to make sure that we bring guys up when they're ready to, to, to compete and, and, and play at the NHL level. Um, you know we've got a really good development team with Meg and Doug, and we just brought in uh, Angus Mugford. Like uh, it, it's we're at a stage now where. We don't want to rush guys. We don't need to rush guys. So as excited as we are, and we think he's going to have a, a, a long, uh, successful NHL career, it'll begin when he's ready. And what about the, like, there's just such a critical mass of guys now compared to even a year ago, like in terms of prospects. I guess it's all good, right? Uh, compete against each other. There's They're going to be all over the globe this year. And Yeah, and they can grow together. I mean, by a couple of years in, in, in uh, bingo, you know, with Nate Bash and Mike McLeod and, and, and some of these other guys, uh, Colin White, you know, they, they grow together. And that, and, and that culture that we're starting to build that, that starts at the top with Fitzy uh, and, and really trickles down, uh, they need some time to get indoctrinated and, and marinate. And, yeah, listen, this is pro sports. It's competitive. So um, we're really excited about our, our, our young group. As young as we are at the NHL level, we still have a lot of prospects and, um, you know, so the, the, the future's bright with the Devils.